Hi, this is Deborah Peters and welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you subscribing and give me a thumbs up if you like this content and then I'll be able to create more like this for you. I'd love it if you commented so I could understand how this is affecting you or how it's serving you, what you're gaining from it, and I'll keep expanding on this curriculum. So today's episode is all about calibration, becoming a thought leader and realizing that it's through the process of calibration that you actually are able to create your own space in the world. What does that mean, having your own space in the world? So we are typically programmed and conditioned to follow others. As little kids, zero to seven, it's the imprint years, we're, we're basically conditioned by our environment. Our environment includes our parents, our nannies, our coaches, our babysitters, our siblings, and you know, essentially where we live and how we live. For me, I grew up on a farm, so there was a lot of open space and I could pretty much, as long as I was home by dinner, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but you understand what I'm saying to you? I had a lot of freedom and it gave me the opportunity to really fully engage my imagination. I mean, most kids have great imaginations. I feel that by being in a rural area and not having a whole lot of external stimulation, I really had to rely on my own entertainment system, which is in my mind. And this served me so well in my life. I mean, on one hand, you know, you could look at it and go, oh, the poor kid, she didn't have, you know, what other kids had in terms of toys and experiences and travel. Perhaps not, but I had this amazing freedom where I could just ride my horse for hours or I could ride my bike for hours or I could just wander and I could use my imagination to enrich my experiences in the moment. I could take something that was completely plain and what most kids probably would be bored with and I could turn it into the absolute greatest adventure. And so that serves me to this day and it enables me to be extremely creative in my business, for my clients, with my clients, and really be able to get my clients to think beyond their current reality. And if you've been following me at all and watching my videos, you know by the content that that is the underlying theme for everything that I am creating here on YouTube. And it's the baseline for how I do my coaching and how I teach my programs. And when I'm doing consulting work with companies, it's what I bring to the table to raise the bar on their ability to think beyond their current environment and circumstances. So let's get into this idea of calibration. You could also call it equalization. You know, when you are the holidays are coming, for example, and you know, we just had the holidays. So as you're coming into the holidays, you're anticipating all the good stuff that's going to happen. And then you're also anticipating all of those challenging conversations or maybe the criticisms or whatever goes on in your family dynamic. Maybe you're, you're anticipating the TLC and the, or the mummy love or the daddy love or the sibling love or whatever it is that happens in your family. But the, where it becomes this issue for people, and it's not just in a, a, a biological family, your company is your family as well. And we make these energetic connections with other people. So when you're working on teams, when you're part of an organization, this can happen as well. And it's the concept of equalization where we have a tendency to equalize to our environment. 
we have a tendency to become like our environment, if I was to unpack it and break it down into other terms. So when we equalize or, be, or, or become more like our environment, then we actually aren't thinking so much for ourselves. We're being influenced by these external rules, um, culture, moods, energies, attitudes of the other people that are in the environment. And this can have a direct impact on our ability to be, you know, somewhat autonomous and to think for ourselves. I feel that in all the work that I've done over the years in coaching people and teaching them how to repattern themselves, that this has always been probably the number one priority for most people <laughs> is where they can actually learn to think for themselves. And the more you can equalize to you, calibrate to you, then the less you have a tendency to go with the flow or follow the herd or, or fit in. If you have any issues with feeling like you don't fit in, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, trying to fit in is probably not going to be very healthy for you on a, an emotional level. So what it is, is this calibration to you. And I talk a lot about the importance, in fact, the necessity for meditating every day. And when you hit that pause button, it's really great because it's like a zero point where now you, rather than calibrate to those around you, you're actually calibrating to your higher self. You're calibrating to the relationship you have with your creator. You're calibrating to your greatness, your, your potential, your possibilities the infinite aspect of you that you're still actualizing and bringing into form in your experiences. How does this show up? Well, it will show up in terms of how you communicate with others. It will show up in your willingness and your ability to speak up and speak out. In one video, I talked about imposter syndrome and this can really be coming from a, a calibration issue or the ability to equalize to yourself rather than to equalize to others. You know, energy is a very powerful thing. And when people have really strong opinions and points of view about how things must be a certain way in order for it to be okay, if you find yourself being, con you know, connecting into that and kind of going down that path of accepting that, then you sort of lose sight of your own self-awareness, of your own ability to connect into who you want to be. So when you're working in a team and you're contributing and you're collaborating, to really be a thought leader means your capacity for seeing the whole picture and seeing everyone's role in the team and their connection to what they're creating, their, their creative side, what they're bringing to the table, what they're contributing, and then also to be able to see yours as well and to stay connected to the truth of who you are and to be able to express that. So rather than get caught up in perhaps a forceful opinion or a limiting point of view or just to go along with the herd because you don't want to cause problems, you don't want to be seen as that person that you know is too strong in their viewpoint is to really be able to communicate that in an effective way. And so some language that you can use to do that is, you know, I, I can see where you're coming from with that and 
this is the angle that I'm looking at it from. Or you could acknowledge them by saying, you know, that I think that has, that has value and I'd like to contribute this. So we can use our, our language patterns to acknowledge that other person and then bring more into the mix without compromising, without losing track of really the connection that we have with ourselves and what we're seeking to bring to the table. So that equalization point, you know, you have to be really careful with that because it's so easy to get caught up you know, I think sometimes that's what buyer's remorse is about, where people will get in and they'll buy something because they're super excited, and then later they're like, wait a minute, I really didn't want that. <laughs> so being self-aware, first off, is the key. You know, you must be self-aware in order to even identify if this is an issue for you. And once you're self-aware, then you can become more aware of other people because everyone is coming at a situation from their own perspective. Even if they think they're coming at it from the good of all, there's still, you know, there's still a selfish component in everything we do. There has to be because we're there, we're present, we're choosing to be a part of it. So there has to be a selfish component to it. Even especially people that are selfless are really the most selfish people there are because in their perception of being selfless, it's serving, they're serving themselves in terms of validation and the need to be liked and the need to give and the need to fix others. You know, I could go down a whole laundry list around selflessness so but the point of this video is about calibration and it's about equalization so first of all you want to calibrate yourself to what I consider to be like a zero point where you have a clean slate at the beginning of the day where you're connected to your higher self and all of the external influences are shut down and shut off so you can go into this place of feeling at one with you and then from that place you can look at your intentions for the day your goals for the day the people you need to interact with the projects that need to be completed where you need to actually take action and you can come into that action from a place of connected to yourself rather than just being like, you know, the tail wagging the dog where the environment around you, the news, the, the team, the boss, the spouse, the children, the traffic is controlling how you feel about yourself. And so that's really the key here is to set that calibration and you can recalibrate at any time throughout the day you can recalibrate any moment you can you know i just had a call with a with a with a prospective client and after the call i needed to recalibrate to me because it was pretty heavy you know so some people have a lot of stuff going on and so that energy especially when you're sensitive you can pick up on that and it, if you allow it to, it can have an impact on your day in a negative way. So understanding by being self-aware that this is actually what's going on instead of it being about you is really, really powerful. And so that's the point of meditating and learning to calibrate to you. And then in terms of equalization, it's being flexible so that you can collaborate and you can work in, in team environments and you can contribute without becoming it. You see, we've heard, I think, a lot of media attention on being an empath or being totally disconnected from any emotion. And those are on you know, very opposite ends of the scale. Being in the middle where you can work with others, you can 
grow a team, you can grow performance in a team, especially as a coach. If you're a team leader, you know, really being skilled as a coach so that you can bring your team along and get them to connect to the end goals on an emotional level will inspire action, particularly if it's a healthy emotional level, it will inspire action, it will inspire productivity, it will inspire fulfillment and, and the joy, just the sheer joy of working on a project and taking it to fruition and seeing and being excited and happy and joyful about the creation of that. So, you know, there's um, equalization to self, there's equalization to others. You know, I really am a fan of Joseph Campbell, The Hero's Journey, The Road Less Traveled. That really contributes to being a thought leader. If you've, if you've read any of his work or studied any of his material, choosing the road less traveled is typically not the popular road. <laughs> and it can feel lonely, absolutely. You know, they, they, that old saying, like, it's lonely at the top. Being in a leadership role with a lot of responsibilities can be very lonely. And so being okay with carving out a path that doesn't have social proof, that's the key. When you're willing to carve out a path that doesn't have social proof and you let the rest of the, the world catch up with you, that's a very powerful place to be. That makes you fierce, actually. It makes you very brave, and it speaks to courage. I think that in the process of that, you're gonna go through all sorts of interesting dynamics, and when you have this ability to recalibrate yourself, then you can keep reminding yourself what the end goal is and to not get thrown off course by any of these little things in the middle. And what that does is it creates a feeling of invincibility and it creates a feeling of being infinite instead of this mortal thought of, you know, where are we at? How old are we? What are we losing? What did we not experience? We better get after it. Um, really can set you up for failure. So I hope this helps you. I wanted to just unpack this notion of, you know, what does it really take to be your greatest you and to, to express your capacity for greatness and to give you a couple of tools, you know, the calibration, the equalization, and just the desire to stand out from the crowd and take that road less traveled and celebrate it and celebrate you. So remember that every day, celebrate the wins. Don't necessarily always focus on what didn't turn out. It's okay to look at what didn't happen because then you can make things better and you can improve, but at the end of it all, after all of that is said and done, make sure you celebrate the wins. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Deborah Peters. Have a blessed day.